So it's been a while since I've done a video like this and a lot has changed with the Xbox since then. So I figure it's time to get this video a bit of a refresh and I'm gonna show you how to properly set up an Xbox One X and S and we're gonna go through it with the basics, getting you from out of the box to gaming as simple and as smooth as possible. Now this video should work for all the consoles that are available for the Xbox, so the Xbox One X, Xbox One S, and the Xbox One S All Digital. I'm gonna be mainly focusing on the Xbox One S All Digital because I actually need to get that set up and updated because I'm actually sending it off to a friend that's going to be using that Xbox. I'm also gonna put timestamps below as well too, so you'll be able to easily fall through this and if it's the part you wanna quickly jump back to, you can just click the timestamps or should chapter it out here on YouTube somewhere just to make it a lot easier for you. Now, while I'll mainly be focusing on the all digital version of the Xbox One S here in this video, I will show some of the 4K Blu-ray settings that you do get in options during the setup here um, at the end. So definitely stay tuned for that at the very end of the video. And also let's quickly just kind of go over some of the differences here between all the Xboxes. Now they all have the same connections and hookups, which you will see when I kind of go over that portion of the video, but the differences really come in the hardware specification. So all the Xboxes can support 4K HDR video. However, the all digital version can only stream content. So stream or downloadable to be able to play that video up to 4K and HDR. Uh, the Xbox One S and Xbox One X have the ability to do that with Blu-ray drives as well too. So it's gonna have that additional Blu-ray content if you wanna use this for that, you can there with it. Now the X has a special feature and the ability to be able to play video in native 4K. It's the only console that can do that in this lineup. The other ones will be able to play games in HDR, but it won't be able to do it in native 4K. It'll probably upscale the resolution to 4K, maybe playing 1440p depending upon the game and what the developers kind of decided. But for 4K 60p native gaming, that's only gonna be available on the Xbox One X. So you wanna keep that in mind if you're still trying to figure out which ones you wanna purchase here. To the connections here. So the first thing I like to connect is my HDMI cable to where it says the TV slot on the back. So yeah, since you have two HDMI ports, you wanna connect that first cable into there. That's obviously gonna connect the TV and Xbox to each other so you can see what's on the screen, of course. Now, the second HDMI port on there, that is actually for your cable box or satellite box because Xbox has the ability to be able to pass through your cable box and, and actually control it. So you'll actually be able to through the TV app, watch your Xbox, watch your TV through your Xbox rather, and be able to watch content. Now, I used to do that. I haven't done that in a long time since I've sort of switched over to streaming services. So I'm not gonna really use that here in my setup, but I just wanna show you that is available if that's something you wanna do in making your Xbox your main media center. Now, the next thing I plug in is um, external hard drives. Now, there's three USB ports here and they're all USB 3.0. I like to plug in my external hard drive because even though this comes with either 500 or one terabyte or sometimes even two terabytes of storage built in, after a while, games get big, massive, and a lot of games are gonna be downloading and you're really gonna need to be able to expand that storage. So I like using the USB ports for that. You can also use the USB ports for things such as a TV tuner. There is a TV tuner available for the Xbox One to get free over the air channels if you wanna use that, that's pretty cool. And I will go over external storage probably in a separate video because I kind of really deserve its own little sort of focus and if you want me to talk about more about the tv tuner stuff i can focus on that as well too but i think that's a little bit of a separate video not totally in sort of the basic setup here now i personally like to connect my xbox via a wired connection because i can get the best connection possible the fastest speed and it's just kind of guaranteed to go that fast now you can't connect this wirelessly and for this setup i'm actually going to do a wireless so you can see how and when you're going to be able to connect your wireless through the setup uh, just know that you can't have it plugged in and the wireless uh, option show up because they won't show up you can't have them both going on at the same time now there's a couple of the ports on here that i'm not going to be using one of them is your audio optical port so if you have a sound bar or an audio system that uses uh, optical audio, you're gonna be able to plug it in right there. There's also an IR out port. Now what that is for, if you want your Xbox to control other stuff in your media center, your stereo or other components, 
and you don't have a connect that would be able to sort of uh, use it as an IR blaster, you can actually buy a separate IR blaster, plug it into that port and be able to actually use it and connect all your other devices and allow your Xbox to control it. So that's one thing you wanna sort of keep in mind if you're gonna use that port. I don't really have a use for that here personally myself, but it's just something to sort of keep in mind. Now once you have everything set up here, just plug in the power cable and you're ready to go. And this is the basic setup you would see with an Xbox One X, S or the all digital, whichever version that you may have. I'm gonna unplug that uh, HDMI cable because I don't really need a second one because I'm not plugging in a cable box since I don't use that anymore. And I'll be going through this through a wired connection as well too, or the wireless connection rather. So I'm gonna unplug that wired connection before I set everything else up back here. But now that you've seen how this connected up, let's jump over to the software side and start that setup process. All right, we have everything plugged in and hooked up to our TV, ready to set up the software on our Xbox One X. So this is normally what you'll get here. There's the main screen here and you're gonna wanna take your controller and press on the home button right there at the top. Now, if you're familiar with that button, you're gonna be using it a lot. That can also connects the Xbox controller to the Xbox and that will also power it on as well too. So we wanna hit the A button at this point. And here we are. So we're gonna go through some of the basic setup right here. So uh, we have several languages we can choose from, uh, depending on what language you want the Xbox to natively use. We're gonna use English here. And you can use a variety of that. So if you live in South Africa or New Zealand, Israel, the different flavors of English, so to speak here, we're gonna choose the United States because that's where we are here. It's gonna check our network connection. Now I'm doing is wireless instead of wired. So it's gonna allow me to choose which wireless network I wanna to connect to, depending on what's connected. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly do that and always connect to the Wi-Fi that belongs to you, by the way. Don't be stealing Wi-Fi. All right, once you have your network connected here, it'll tell you it's all good once it gives it a quick check. We'll hit continue. Now we can choose our location. Where do you live? Over in the United States. It's going to check for updates to see if there's any updates that you're going to need. Uh, before starting using the console, obviously we have about, hey, it looks like a one gig update we're gonna have to do with this here. So, and we're gonna have to do this or it's gonna tell us to turn off the Xbox. It's the unfortunate thing. Two things are really required with an Xbox. It's gonna be your internet connection and constant updating as well too. So we're gonna go ahead and start the update and let this run. We're gonna do over wireless and kind of time it to see how long it takes. All right, now after that update just finished here, it took a little bit of time. Now we're at the point where we can sign into our Microsoft account. You're going to need that as well too, to set up your Xbox. So go ahead and click next here. And it should prompt you to do one of at least two things. One, sign in with a current Xbox account, or you will register a new one. So just give it a couple seconds here. All right. All right, once you signed up here on the Xbox here itself, the next thing it's gonna ask you if you wanna share data with game apps and developers, you can hit continue and learn more, learn more about it. It'll give you some more information here about that. Uh, and sharing data with publishers, you can kind of read through this stuff if you want to. You kind of don't have an option but to share, so just keep that in mind. But if you wanna read the legalese on that, you can right there. If you wanna allow enhanced error reporting to help with Xbox products, you can allow that as well too. I'll go ahead next here. All right, we have our sign in and security functions here as well too. Some of you parents might wanna pay attention to this. Uh, this all affects sort of what you can do in terms of sign in, purchases, buying and all that sort of stuff. You can set up a no barriers, people can sign in, to sign in, you and you in, see your data, web pages, all that stuff. Ask for your pass key before signing you in or lock it down. They'll need to be I'll need to be authorized for buying things, changing Microsoft settings, using a Microsoft account all in general there. So whichever one you prefer to use in this scenario is up to your personal preferences. Uh, we're gonna choose no barrier for right now. And you have options on how you want to sign in. So you can use instant sign in, it will sign in to the Xbox uh, based on the main account that it's set up for, or you can do it based on a controller. So everybody can have their own controller and it can assign their profile to the controller. And then when they power on the Xbox, it'll power on with their account and they'll sign in as them. In this instance, we're gonna go use instant sign on. You also don't have to use, you can just skip it if you want to. 
So we'll go ahead and hit use instant sign in. Um, if we have any codes for like product codes, uh, Xbox Game Pass, things like Xbox Live Gold, any of that stuff you want to enter into here. I'm not going to do any of that right now. And they found some settings for my last Xbox that can actually import in. This is important for people that are um, importing their Xbox from or moving from an old Xbox to a new one. You can apply these settings if you want to. I'm going to say no thanks for now since I'm going to be giving this machine away to a friend. I'm going to go ahead and hit next here. All right, choose your time. We're, we are here in the East Coast, East Side. We'll scroll down here. I always tend to miss this. There we go. And you can automatically adjust the daylight saving time as well, too. I'm gonna hit next. And you have two options. When the console's off, you can hit energy, energy saving mode. In this mode, it, slow, it, it, it basically powers it down to the lowest power state possible. And it goes to a slow startup. You might you might not be able to get updates. Uh, you might be interrupted for updates, meaning that it, in energy saving mode, saves power while your console is off effectively with that. Instant on, faster startup time, option to boost straight to the TV, and you can use your voice to wake up your Xbox. Instant on is definitely important if you plan to use your Xbox as a media center and you're plugging in your cable box to the TV as I showed you earlier. You're definitely going to want to have instant on turned on to kind of have a full experience there. I'm going to leave instant on anyways, even if I don't do that. Here's a couple of options here. Choose what to keep updated, keep my console up to date, keep my games and apps up to date. It will automatically kind of do this, even though truthfully speaking, you really can't do much if you don't have your console updated. Then you want to keep your games and apps updated as well, too. We'll just leave that it is. And it looks like right now it, it by default, it sets everything at 1080p, but it does detect the 4K TV, which I've connected here. And looks like we can connect to switch the resolution, which we'll do right here. All right, once you have everything, if you're gonna set up here, you'll be boom, right into the main screen here on your Xbox. This is your main menu here on your new system. So the, basically the way the menu navigation kind of works here to give you a little quick tip on it, is that all your main options are kind of here on the left side, you can kind of go up and down. And you go sort of right here, you just kind of click right to go between all of them to kind of pick and choose what you kind of select. And you can customize this as much as you sort of want to. I am thinking of doing a different video outside of this just to kind of talk about this menu and interface because I think it's a little bit more detailed and I think it'd be warned its own video. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do the video separately on that. But we'll hit the Xbox home button here. When you hit that home button, it'll come up here to where you can kind of get some quick actions, quick actions and also different portions of the menu to get quick access to. But mainly I want to go to settings here and we go ahead and click on settings. And in here, I want to show you where you kind of have your general settings you may want to set here from your network, TV and display options. You kind of can see here, you can change your resolution, um, your video modes, you can calibrate your TV. I have it set to NEP, but I can I know I can set this up to 4K a little bit later. Your account information, system in terms of your storage, your console info, updates and downloads are right there. Any accessories, digital assistance, because this does work with Alexa, media remotes, connect if you have connected are there. Any other sort of preferences right here for caption and share, idle options are set there. Ease of access is right here as well too. But let me show you actually on one of the other Xboxes, Xbox One X, what you see when you see when you have a 4K uh, Blu-ray drive inside of it. Let me show you what options you kind of have there with that. Now, as I said earlier, I was going to show some of the options that are available if you choose an Xbox that has a Blu-ray drive in it, that'd be the X and the S. And you can see it here in devices and streaming. And if you go to the option that say uh, Blu-ray, you'll get some options here of how you want to handle your Dolby Digital, dynamic range on or off for auto. You can enable BD Live to improve uh, uh, Blu-ray playback. Persistent storage is basically if there's some downloadable content, you can actually Hold, it'll hold some of the storage there for it. You can clear this out if you need to there. You can let your receiver decode the audio if you want that to handle that right there as well too. You can handle the menus and everything kind of within here. So that's pretty much it in terms of the Blu-ray disc that you got to have in there with that. I'm here on my Xbox One X. Let's back out and that's pretty much it from here. Uh, just go to my games and apps and if you have some games downloaded, you'll see them right here and you'll be able to download and play those. If you have them on disc, just insert the disc, the game will install at a certain point. It'll, it'll let you kind of jump in and play the game while it's still installing. And from there, you just kind of hit, boom, let the game load and you're pretty much good to go. So this is Bowman here from BW1. Let me know what you guys think of the video, questions, comments, concerns as I asked before. Thank you for watching and always remember to live your tech world in high definition.